volume warning. Woo! Yeah! Mother yes! of God! Yes, thank God! This looks phenomenal! Kobeni, power, Aki, Denji, this is amazing! <laughs> Happy Chainsaw Man Tuesday, my friends. Today is a good day. The new episode is incredible, and I know I've said it before, but god damn, this shit blew me away. In the previous bat fight, instead of a snappy and quick encounter, everything felt heavy and weightier. You could really feel the momentum of every blow. This episode, there was zero CGI, partially because this episode's director was Tatsuya Yoshihara, a juggernaut in 2D animation, doing scenes like this, this, and this. If at any point you feel that the episode's art direction feels inconsistent, it's because it is. Every episode is directed by a different person, which is something I didn't even pick up on until now, but they still all work together to make sure that they have a cohesive vision, which means watching this show weekly, you might not even realize this, but if you're binging it, then it may be easier to pick up on. Last episode was directed by Hironori Tanaka, who is responsible for scenes like this, this, and this. So I apologize if I went a little harsh on the CGI, since it probably wasn't his choice to implement. I think he did an astounding job. This episode had no CGI chainsaws though, and Tatsuya blew it out of the goddamn park, head front and center. You'd think they tossed him an underhanded softball with the astronomical heights he's set moving forward. I said recently that most of the areas in which it is improving the source material is in the small details, but this episode has cemented itself as proof that it can add content that fits the source material and improve upon the original. When Denji gets so excited to touch Power's boobs being so over-exaggerated really sells it when compared to his more simple yeah, from the manga. Last time was a bit salty with some of the changes made from the manga, but these changes feel much more warranted, like they're really improving the original. Although if I had to say, these two panels don't nearly compare. I think what I've learned from observations like these though, is that both the anime and the manga are almost always worth checking out. The anime is going to provide you with incredible movement and weight, but manga will provide you with incredible stills and detail. A simple observation albeit, but one that flies over my head sometimes when being critical of something I love. Also, she says the blood is warm and feels pleasant, which feels like a less simple way of saying what she had said in the manga. Blood feels good when it's warm too. I understand improving the language, but making power seem smarter seems counterintuitive to her character. I just don't understand making it less straightforward, but nitpicking details like this is redundant regardless, since it could always just be translation mishaps. The fight with the Bat Devil left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Wait, 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 wait! But! I don't think it was bad by any means. More so that straying from the source material is detrimental and not beneficial, but this episode is a phenomenal example of how straying from the source material can be a good thing too. I mean, all of this happens from just one page of the manga. Granted, both are phenomenal. I don't want to bring any more negativity because I find them both incredible in their own right, but I think having an example of how straying from the source material can be both good and bad is important for observing and critiquing the media that we love most. I loved how Tatsuya was able to capture Denji's absolutely unhinged and maniacal nature. The insane laughing, the spitting and screaming. He's out of control and I have never seen that feeling captured so well. This is truly a phenomenal example of how straying from the source material can be beneficial. They really went all out and I think it was important because it establishes that even a weaker devil like the leech devil is still incredibly powerful and should be viewed as a threat. Although I can't lie, this panel would have been a better shot than this one from the anime regardless. We're only 10 minutes into the episode and I've almost used up all of my 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Also look at this apple peeling Sakuya. Aki waking up in the morning, making coffee, sitting outside. These simple and tranquil interactions help balance the intense and visceral fights from the manga, so I really appreciate them. Power breaking the door handle is very in character, and wasn't present in the manga either. A welcome change. Power flinging her veggies and Denji falling back to catch it is also an adorable touch. These little details are becoming more and more prevalent. Aki's anger is so much more exaggerated in the anime, which is fitting, although I wish Power still covered one of her eyes with her hair. Also, if you're wondering what Power's sweater means, 76.1 is a Japanese love radio station. Denji's horniness is palpable. You can feel it through the screen as his sweat drips down his forehead. Before he can cop a feel, the episode ends! No! Oh well, gotta wait until next time, and we are treated with this absolutely delightful ending that is power exclusive. This episode was phenomenal, action packed, providing exposition, character interests, and progression. And no spoilers, but next episode we're gonna see some big character progression with Denji, so be excited. I gotta go, my time should be about up.